Good evening, this is Brass Tax. I'm Zaka Jacob. The Election Commission is proposing some sweeping electoral reforms from cleaning up electoral rolls to campaign financing and allowing NRIs to vote. Now, these are very substantive reforms, many of which are long overdue. But opposition parties, almost all of them, have outright rejected these advances by the Election Commission. They are viewing it from a singular prism, and that is that the Election Commission is overstepping its jurisdiction, or simply that the Election Commission is doing all of this at the bidding of the central government. If there can be financial reforms in this country, banking reforms, stock market reforms, legal reforms, why cannot there be election reform? The Swachh politics campaign has begun. While speaking to CNN News 18, Union Law Minister Kiran Rijiju dropped a big hint of major reforms in the Representation of People's Act. Rijiju said that about 70 to 80 proposals for change in the RP Act is under consideration by the government. The electoral reform proposals are on candidates' poll expenditure, amount utilised for paid news, debarment of candidates, decisions on validity of an election in a time-bound manner, to supplement the existing model code guidelines and informing the voter on financial consequences of freebie promises. The Niti Aayog has welcomed the proposals and the intent of the poll body to make reforms in the decades-old law. In a developing country like India, between freebies and growth, I feel that we should first see that targeted freebies uh, are, uh, are uh, allowed. Rest of the freebies should not come at the cost to the growth. But the opposition remains miffed on the reforms proposed. The opposition suggests that the amendments in the law should be made through parliament. Election Commission has no mandate for this. If uh, there are uh, some changes will have, to, will have to be done in election laws, Parliament is there. Parliament is supreme in our democracy. The RJD even attacked the poll body and called them an extension of the BJP. The party believes that these proposals will give the BJP an upper hand in the polls. Election Commission's agenda is also to provide level playing field, mm. according to 324. If they don't provide the level playing field, if they appear at the side of the government, I must tell you that electoral democracy is in danger in India. Freebies are being debated for a while now. Even the Supreme Court had demanded a law to regularise freebies as such poll promises can destroy the Indian economy. The big question now remains, will the numerous political parties of India accept the changes in our election laws? All right, so the Election Commission had written a letter to the law minister in September where it said the following things. Uh, first, on the cleanup of funding for political parties, it said that cash donations to parties should be capped at 20% of the total or a maximum of 20 crores. Also, it went on to say that anonymous donations should be lowered to 2,000 rupees from the current 20,000 rupees. So anybody contributing more than 2,000 rupees to a, to a political party needs to be identified. Uh, all donations above 2,000 have to be reported through the contribution report. Also, mandatory digital transactions for all poll expenses above 2,000 rupees to a single entity. So, why are some political parties unwelcoming of these changes and do these opposition parties have a point when they say this is overstepping of its jurisdiction by the Election Commission? Sanju Varma, National Spokesperson of the BJP, joining us. Ashpreet Singh Khadial, spokesperson of the Congress Party, Priyanka Kakkar of the Amadmi Party, Mahesh Tapase, a spokesperson of the NCP joining us, Kailash Adhikari is political analyst, and Sanjay Kumar, professor and former director with CSDS. Uh, I'll start with one uh, area, which is uh, the cleanup of electoral rolls. I want to ask uh, Sanju Varma, uh, as far as elections in India are concerned, we have electoral rolls for Lok Sabha, which is separate, for Vidhan Sabha, which is separate, and for other uh, municipal and panchayat elections which are separate. And oftentimes, it is the case that one person who has voted in a Lok Sabha election suddenly finds his or her name not there in, an, in a Vidhan Sabha election electoral roll. Shouldn't we have one electoral roll that's cleaned up from time to time instead of having multiple electoral rolls? 
you know zaka that's a very uh, uh, pertinent uh, and timely suggestion uh, and i'm sure uh, those uh, you know in the know of things and watching their show uh, will take cognizance of it uh, i think you know apart from what you mentioned about multiplicity of electoral roles uh, you know if you go back in time over the last 7 to 8 odd years uh, on various platforms uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi himself and his senior cabinet ministers have often said that rather than having an election every six months, you know, be it a bi-poll or a local body election or a panchayat election or a Vidhan Sabha election, why not have one nation, one election? Uh, and that is something that we intend delivering on going forward. But at this point in time, I just want to draw the attention of your audience to what is the moot point of the debate today. it is not just the election commission which is empowered under article c24 c25 c26 c27 c28 and c29 to ensure free and fair elections and take steps thereof but the supreme court way back in 2015 just 10 seconds what did the supreme court say and which the election commission has been forced uh, while writing to various political parties to solicit their suggestion mm -hmm. the supreme court said in the interest transparency level playing field and credibility of promise it is expected that manifesto also reflect the rationale for the promises and broadly indicate the ways and means okay. to meet the financial requirements for it trust of voters should be sought only on those promises which can possibly be fulfilled this is the supreme court of india way back in 2015 and you know 7 years hence nothing has changed we are only okay. trying to give a voice to what the apex court Uh, wanted delivered on the ground for greater transparency one of, in one of the process. concerns for a number of years has been about clean funding of political parties about uh, the means of funding of political parties so in order to curb the use of black money in elections and i want to ask both ashpreet kadyal as well as uh, priyanka kakkar this uh, the election commission had proposed lowering the disclosure limit for anonymous donations from 20000 rupees to 2000 rupees any contribution above 2000 rupees would have to be identified through the donor report now the bsp i'm just giving one example uh, the bsp uh, for instance claims that it has received crores of rupees in political donations from small amounts from uh, uh, tens of thousands of individuals but it does not name who those individuals are uh, because earlier uh, above uh, you needed to name only above 20000 so the question is why should such a leeway be made for political parties if if you as uh, individual taxpayers you and i as individual taxpayers have to reveal our sources of income then why should an exception be made to political parties ashpreet kadyal see now when uh, if when it comes to the bjp it's only big talk and no action at all whatsoever they say they have a problem with freebies they say they have a problem with ravedi culture mr modi especially however they haven't even considered defining what freebies are they haven't even you know told us if they will do that in the first place in the future also because it is very important that you know all this talk all this debate all these press notes they lead to something conclusive and constructive however there is no clarity and there is only confusion no for doubt if as to what freebie is no, no, and this we're oh, not this we're not talking about the freebie that. debate ashpreet we're not talking about that. the freebie debate today we're talking about the other uh, reforms proposed by definitely. the election commission so definitely. i want your views on and that these are, these, these are connected if you may allow me because electoral bonds as well you know when people are paying tax on curd on uh, on 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 wheat on rice on paneer on 20 rupees ki lassi why should they not be paying you know the people who are contributing not be paying tax on 20000 rupee donations now the limit is on 20000 however you can make a 20000 donation for 20000 more times you won't be asked a single word and where does this all 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 this money go and why should they not pay tax on 20000 but people have to pay on 20 rupees this is a big question and number 2 Let's not just talk. Let's do something productive and you know conclusive. No, no, that's, no, that's no, no. Oh, 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 that's one happening. second, Ashpreet. I'm not sure how paying tax and revealing the name of a donor are are connected. But revealing the name of a donor is a simple premise. If individuals in this country, if companies and corporations in this country have to reveal their sources of income, 
why shouldn't political parties be asked to reveal their source of income? But the the point on electoral Hello, bonds is valid. Uh, that matter is before the Supreme Court. So I'll ask, no, no, I'll ask, Kakar. yeah, yeah, I'll ask Priyanka Kakar that. How can you tackle the issue? How can you tackle the issue of black money in politics or black money in campaign financing if you do not uh, tackle anonymous uh, electoral bonds? I think that is a, is, a, is a valid question to ask. But ultimately, it boils down to are you going to clean up the electoral process? Because in this country, we've seen reforms in all kinds of areas, from banking reforms to private sector reforms. Uh, even government sector reforms have been happening for a number of years now. Why can't we have electoral reforms in this country? The BJP has maximum... When it Good comes evening, to Zaka. Priyanka, Good Priyanka. evening to all of you. Yeah, thank and you. Yes. So, Zaka, um, I, I think Ahmadmi Party would be the first party in the country which spoke about transparency in uh, donations. Now, what happened subsequently, Zaka? Central government came up with a law... Uh, and made amendments which permitted anonymous funding and anonymous anonymous taking and anonymous giving. And also what happened, Zaka, is, you know, in 2018, you will recall, uh, the High Court of Delhi had, the Honorable High Court of Delhi had phatkaroed both these parties, that uh, BJP and the Congress, that you are in violation of the FCRA Act. What did they do? They went back to the parliament and brought in amendments in the FCRA Act, which permitted them foreign donations since 1965. So all violations absolved. So today, if Priyanka, you say that once, um, one second, one these second. May, are reforms, may, I, may, I, may I just underline one thing? All yes, parties, including your party, yes. receive foreign contributions. From individuals who may be supporters of your party, you receive foreign contributions. Of course, it has to be within the law of the land. We have the, no problem the, the, in... The, 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 the point, the point is no this. No, no, the publishing. point is this. The point is this. Now the election commission is saying, if it is okay for all political parties to seek and get foreign contributions from non-resident Indians, then why not a proposal on allowing non-resident Indians voting rights? It's, it's on the table. Let's discuss. What has happened? No, no, let's first please go to, let's not digress today. I will discuss on this too, but subsequently today I want to definitely discuss the reforms proposed by the EC and why they have been proposed. That is the debate and I would like to please speak yes. about it. Yes, this is also part of those reforms. Yes, so go coming, ahead. Coming to the fr hmm. So coming to the freebies issues, Akka, um, if you will recall, uh, coming to the independence of the election commission, that is the major issue, Akka. And why that is? Because you will recall, Zaka, in 2019, Ashok Lavasaji, when he was one of the two election commissioners of India, he wrote a dissenting note that when it comes to BJP, the, 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 the violations are completely ignored. Uh, the violations of the MCC during the 2019 uh, elections, for example, were completely ignored and very weak action was taken. Okay. This was the this was Ashok Lavasaji's uh, dissenting note, and what happened? The central agencies hounded him and his family members. So you are basically what saying that, that uh, questioning and the, the integrity no, of the EC as, a, as an institution. Okay. No, I've got limited time in today's debate, and there are six no, no, guests, so I, I need to I, go I to other to. others also. Please, ma'am, with your permission. Let me go to let me go to Mr. Tapase of the NCP. One area that all political parties pay lip service to, but eventually do nothing about, is the criminals in politics or people with criminal antecedents in politics. Now, in the current Maharashtra Assembly, out of 288, 172 MLAs, Mr. Tapase, more than 50% face grave criminal charges. Many of them heinous charges, including rape and murder. Why should the Election Commission not? put out a proposal that those who are facing heinous criminal charges should not be allowed to stand for elections? I can't hear you, Mr. Tapasa. You have to you have to speak louder. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, yes, yes. I said the current the current policy, any political party Making any, any candidate uh, face the election in this scenario and he having some kind of charges against him. The political party has to declare in a written advertisement, a printed advertisement about, about the uh, criminal antecedents of the candidate. So, this is the law as of which is the latest amendment. So, as far as whether the charges will be proved or not is another question. 
what are judicial reforms have to come in place in a town and a time bound uh, manner in which the entire judiciary has to operate. We have to define that any, let's say, X charge has to be has to be uh, you know dismissed or has to be, either he has to be acquitted or convicted within so much such a such frame of time. So charges cannot go on forever. So unless and until you are not proved guilty. Agreed, agreed on that. No, no, I agreed on that. That yes, the the criminal justice system in this country takes a, a long time to deliver justice. All I'm saying is, forget about you know cases which you feel are lighter charges or cases which you feel are maybe politically motivated, rival, so on and so forth. But surely, rape and murder are heinous enough to disbar somebody from a political party from uh, putting up a candidate who has rape and murder charges against him or her. I think that's a fair, fair, fair uh, uh, bottom line to start from. Yeah, yeah but uh, at the same time, what is, it, as far as my party is concerned, we have not put a many candidate with such a serious background. At the same time, there are there are people. I mean, the, I mean, the representation of the people that still allows any any person, despite uh, any kind of charge against him, to contest him as an independent. So I mean, if you want to add something on a policy matter. Everything, the everything has to be taken into account. Okay. Let me, again, again, again there, there is a bit of an audio issue with Mr. Tapasi. We'll try and fix that. But let me also go across to Professor Sanjay Kumar because, you know, <laughs> Professor Kumar has been in the business of cephology and, and opinion polls and exit polls for a number of decades now. One of the proposals, and we don't know if this will pass muster, but one of the proposals by the Election Commission is to regulate the uh, publication or the broadcast of opinion and exit polls. In fact, uh, former Chief Election Commissioner S.P. Qureshi is on record to say that he believes, uh, and I don't think you know he represents the views of the entire Election Commission, but he believes in his individual capacity that opinion polls actually influence uh, the electoral process. Uh, if the Election Commission were to take this step of uh, banning opinion polls and exit polls, would that be in the spirit of democracy or would it go against it? Uh, Zaka, I won't uh, favor any ban or uh, complete restriction on publication or dissemination of any opinion poll or exit poll. But yes, regulation I fully support if there are um, me, if there are suggestions or there are suggestions made by election commission for regulating. I am totally in favor of regulating the polls because in the name of polls, a lot of trash is being you know like uh, shown to the viewer or printed in the newspaper. So, regulation means transparency. When I say regulation, it is about transparency, about the methodology, about the funding sources of these polls, about uh, the, the, the parties or the agencies who have uh, commissioned these uh, polls. So, I am totally in favor of transparency about these polls, not only about the method, also about its publication, etc. But as I said earlier, I am not in favor of complete ban on opinion poll or exit poll. No, I think the, the critical question is the accountability. Uh, we have seen, and, and you, I know you you yeah. very ardently advocated that it's it's very difficult in a country like India to get seats right. But we have seen, uh, you know, forecasts and estimates go horribly wrong. So I think the election commission is coming to it in the, from the point of view of whether there's a ban or not. That's a separate matter. But there needs to be accountability if hmm. a pre if a prediction has gone horribly wrong. Uh, I don't know how what would be the parameter to judge uh, accountability in a sense whether the poll have got right or wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, because when you do the polls, whether you're doing an opinion poll or an exit poll, you actually estimate the vote shares. Uh, because you go to the people and ask which party they are likely to vote for or which party they have voted for. It is a separate thing how these votes get translated into seats. Uh, if you look at the Indian electoral system, uh, in Karnataka, last several elections, the party which gets less vote, which is BJP, always got large, larger number of seats, while Congress always gets more votes and get less number of seats. Look at the Lok Sabha elections, uh, Zaka. Uh, Congress had, you know, uh, BJP had 18.6 percent vote in 2009 Lok Sabha elections and they ended up getting 116 seats. Look at the situation of Congress in 2014. Congress had 19.6 percent vote. They ended up getting 44 percent vote. Can election commission explain that why a, sim a party with similar number of votes okay. are getting different kinds of seats? That is the equation which works with the pollsters also. You get you may get vote estimates right, but converting those votes into seats, that's okay. a mathematical equation. You may not get it right as 
the parties get similar number of votes do not do not get similar number one, of seats one other proposal that's been put forth and again we'll have to see if if the government actually brings a, a bill on this is linking aadhar with electoral rolls now kailash adhikari this has been a bit of a concern uh, even after the parliament passed this bill last december we still do not know uh, how effective first of all this will be in weeding out duplicate enrollment or duplicate uh, electoral rolls and and duplicate uh, names on 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 the electoral rolls uh, and and most importantly can this be made mandatory at a time when the supreme court verdict uh, on linking of aadhar with other uh, uh, you know uh, 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 other uh, uh, categories and other uh, uh, concepts uh, has 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 been uh, uh, struck down by the supreme court the supreme court has said that nothing can be mandatorily uh, 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 linked with aadhar surely sir and that is why in the election commission's uh, proposal it is that it is strongly recommended and it, it does not mandate the linking of aadhar with the your electoral rolls uh, just as in the in the case of aadhar and pan as the honorable supreme court has said that you cannot mandate anyone now saga to this entire point of the election commission coming out with uh, approximately 70 80 uh, proposals of overhauling the system is that we as a nation are 75 years old and with each passing time you you learn of certain things of experiences with each passing day we grow and growth involves evolution and it's high time that you know after each and every sector sees reforms after a certain passage of time as you rightly mentioned in the beginning we have seen banking reforms here we are seeing judicial reforms we'll see policing reforms so why not electoral reforms i mean we are the largest democracy of the world and the entire process of 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 election uh, the democracy hinges on that it 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 uh, it, uh, it is it is on that and having said that you know certain issues such as online voting now this is a very interesting uh, proposal now people could be anywhere people could be i, I may not be let, let's say someone is not able to vote because because he is he is sick yeah. or has some or he is somewhere that does not mean that his right to you know vote should be taken away because on that one fateful day he is not mm. able he or she is not able to vote so online voting uh, voting by nris i mean there could be difference of opinions also a person who is not li- living in chicago how how could he know the ground realities let's say if he is from lucknow so whether that that person should be allowed to vote or not there could be bias opinion so with regards to freebies yes they should be made accountable you can not just in order to grab uh, the votes uh, say that you're providing free electricity free okay. water without knowing how will you provide for it you okay. cannot just divert budgets from other uh, sectors or other heads and right. that head suffers because you've just uh, promised this particular by knowing the pulse of the uh, let, let me people. go back to uh, so, sanju verma uh, as far, again as far as the clean up of uh, of electoral financing is concerned and i think this is the point that both priyanka kakkar and ashdeep kadyal were making Yes it's a great proposal to have non anonymous donations above 2000 rupees but what about anonymous electoral bonds You know Zaka I just have to say one very important thing in your introduction you mentioned about you know banking reforms uh, you know uh, cleaning up uh, yeah. uh, various other uh, aspects sectors. of the financial sector uh, so why uh, should modi government take the back seat when it comes to electoral reforms and kailash adhikari uh, as much uh, pretty much the same point I just want to tell you, you know, quickly uh, before answering your question, there was this whole debate about why link Aadhar cards uh, with the electoral rolls. And in support of doing that, I just have this to say that this is the same lot which protested when Aadhar was introduced. But today, in the last five years alone, and I culled out this data from the Finance Ministry's website: eighteen thousand fake NGOs, two point five like fake companies, five crore fake ration cards, three crore fake LPG connections. 2 crore fake manrega cards 6 lakh fake mid day meal beneficiaries and 80000 fake teachers have been culled out of the system to ensure better transparency and accountability okay. and the election reforms that kiran rijiju the law ministry and election commission are talking of is on similar lines and the aam aadmi party made a very interesting observation about the independence of the election commission i just want to say one thing to her before casting aspersions on the apex electoral body let me tell you that it is out in the public domain the ford foundation gave 134 million dollars in the last 7 years out of which 80 percent went to aam aadmi party and madam 80% okay. of 134 million dollars is 107 million dollars so first please give the hisab kitab of what you have received from the four foundation and then give an integrity certificate to the election commission okay Pri- priyanka kakkar uh, respond to that uh, and I, i keep coming back to that point i mean uh, all parties including yours have received foreign funding so why are you hesitant in giving nris uh, voting rights 
let me please first uh, answer rebut give a rebuttal to what the bjp spokesperson was saying now um you know she admitted that the electoral ref reforms were proposed by the modi government and not by the election commission of india you know election commission of india has outlived the reputation of tn session ji why i say this and before the supreme court in the july of this year 2022 the supreme court asked what is your stand on prebees and the hath khade kar di election commission and that please uh, we, don't ask us and then the supreme court thatkarod the center and said why are you hesitant to take a stand on it so what is happening is these reforms around elections are only to see they have already collected all the money you think from from the past 8 years they've collected so much in electoral reforms uska koi it's not transparent kisne diya kisne liya because you know corporates have an affinity with the ruling government so uh, this is this is the bjp doing it because it is for the first time that aam aadmi it is actually scared of aam aadmi party in gujarat that is the reason so they're bringing in these reforms they want free bijli na mile free pani na mile free shiksha na mile free free bus yatra na mile mahilaon ko free mahilaon ko free bus yatra na mile okay okay no 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 shouting please no shouting no cross talk it's not going to help you or our viewers why should the taxpayer money not be given to the taxpayer okay no i i'll i'll come back i'll come back to ashpreet kadyal ashpreet kadyal you know the the problem is leaving all of these reforms to political parties to do as we have seen over the last 20 30 years nothing gets done whether it's criminals in politics whether it is uh you know transparency in funding none of this gets done because political parties have a vested interest in protecting their turf in protecting the people who fund them in protecting uh the criminal elements who get elected uh, on their tickets so why why should we expect it's naive to expect political parties to reform from within see definitely when uh, we ask questions from uh, the central government the bjp about you know electoral bonds because the entire objective is you know clean up transparency accountability and and electoral bonds is is the major issue where you know if you do not talk about electoral bonds but this i think it would be no but that is pending before the supreme court the let the supreme that. court come to a conclusion on whether electoral anonymous electoral bonds are allowed or not no one second one second please uh, i think it, it it is supreme court has already in the back in the day also supreme court has said that the political parties ought to take an initiative and the center hasn't taken an initiative but has turned a blind eye to all these things because okay. this no you know when it comes to when it comes to electoral bonds everybody knows that the bjp has benefited the most okay. two, i i am completely out of time i want to thank all our uh, all our uh, guests because uh, we we have a truncated debate uh, tonight here on brass tax but like i said Uh, I think if we have seen reforms in multiple sectors across this country then there's no reason why we cannot have election reforms in this country. We'll take a quick break when we come back on the other side it's a massive row over Punni and Selvan. Now actor Kamal Hassan has weighed in and said that uh, there was no Hindu or Hindu religion back in the 9th century when the Chola dynasty was in place and therefore there were only Shiva bucks or Vishnu bucks and that is of course stirred off a huge debate. are uh, right on the other side we'll have that